Hello everyone, welcome back to the Director's Cut. My name is Jan Plobauer and I'm here with Antoinette Lang who is leading our regulatory work on modernization. The work is very important to ensure that Canada's essential payments infrastructure continues being aligned with the global regulatory standard and risk management best practices. So uh, why don't you start sharing with us your understanding how the regulatory and risk management work actually supports our modernization journey? Sure. So as you said, um, Payments Canada operate uh, the core payment systems for Canada and every day billions of dollars were exchanged over those systems. Um, two of our systems are designated by the Bank of Canada as, as important. Our high value payment system, LVTS, is designated as systemically important. And our retail batch system, the automated clearing and settlement system, ACSS, is designated as a prominent system. So what it means is these are really core systems that support the economy for Canada. So part of my work is to make sure that these systems continue to meet the regulatory standards. They are being operated in a safe, efficient, and effective manner. That's, that's very good. So the credit risk model, which is kind of embedded in every single system, is an important component to ensure that we, that we manage the risk. Can you share a bit more about the systems and uh, how you are thinking about the credit risk models? Sure. Um, so just like what I said, um, part of the work is to align with requirements and global best practices. So when we're thinking about the credit risk models for the new systems, um, we'll continue to meet those uh, best practices. So for LINCS, which will replace LBTS, our high value system, um, we will be adopting a real-time growth settlement um, feature. Um, it will have a coverall um, credit risk model. So what that means is every payment will be fully supported by liquidity. And these are features that are designed uh, based on direction from the Bank of Canada. For our retail batch system, ACSS, or its, its, its modernized replacement, it will continue to be a deferred net settlement system. Um, there will be a collateral pool that is set aside to make sure that um, the, uh, there is enough uh, uh, collateral to cover the default of uh, the largest participant. So other than you know, these two systems, we're also developing a real-time uh, payment system for Canada, the real-time rail. Um, that is a platform where we anticipate um, innovation, um, wider, wider uh, access, um, more participant. Um, so when we're thinking about uh, developing that, uh, that risk model, we're really looking at options that will balance our need to make sure the system continue to be safe, um, but it will it will have the flexibility to, to allow for wider uh, access. Yeah, you mentioned moving to RTGS for the high value system and also requiring a cover one collateral pool for the ACSS. So what I'm hearing a demand or increased need for collateral or liquidity in the system. So what, uh, what are you kind of looking uh, at how to lower the burden on the participants? Sure, definitely. Um, what we're looking at now is looking at what type of liquidity savings mechanisms um, that we can really build into uh, the link system. Um, what these are is essentially algorithms that would offset payments, um, so only the net amount of liquidity will be required. So that's certainly something we are we are exploring and we will be working very closely with our members. Um, we feel that this is really a tool to help them manage the liquidity, so we will need them to, to, to be working with us along the way as we finalize the design and calibrate uh, these liquidity savings mechanisms. The other thing from our vision, uh, one of the eight needs was uh, need for an open risk-based access. So I know that this is also from the risk management perspective an important piece. So can you share a bit more what's your thinking about uh, open risk-based access across the system? Sure. Um, so open access from our perspective is really making sure that um, there is there is more participation. Um, it is a way from our perspective to really facilitate competition and innovation. Um, the outcome that we're trying to achieve there is that there will be cheaper and easier payments um, for our end consumers. Um, Risk-based approach is essentially a way for us to manage uh, the risk that are being introduced into the system um, in a way that are proportional. So an example of that would be a high value system that clear um, millions of dollars a second, obviously there's going to be more emphasis on risk management than a lower value system. 
Another way that we're approaching is, is really thinking about what are the different activities that are being done in the payment system. Exchanging payments, clearing or settlement, different activities bring different level of risk. Um, so when we think about setting access or participation requirements, we only want to set um, those requirements that are proportional to the risk that are being introduced. So uh, Antoine, thank you so much for your time. I wish you all the best for the next uh, steps on your journey because of course the work is not done and good luck to you and your team. Thank you. And as a reminder for everybody, if you have any comments, questions, input, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out and take care until next time.